Imagine taking your canoe down to the river's edge and putting it into the water. Your oars or paddles are inside. And as you get into the canoe, you deliberately point it upstream and begin working very hard at trying to make movement upstream. And we say, why not let go of those oars and let your boat turn and go with the flow? And our human friends say, oh, Abraham, that just seems lazy. <laughs> and we say, but how long can you keep this up? And you say, until the day I die. <laughs> Which hopefully will be sooner than later because this is a really hard and miserable life. And anyway, you say, everyone that is worth anything is paddling upstream too. All the monuments are about them. All the statues are about them. Every book that is written is about them. And I've heard there are even more rewards after death. So I think I will continue to just paddle upstream and try to eke out whatever reward I can find from this hard work and struggle. It's virtuous, you know, you say to us. And we say, but how long can you keep this up? Because from our broader view, we understand so well the stream. And this is the most important part of all about the stream scenario. You ready? Everything you want is downstream. <laughs> Not one thing that you want is upstream. So all this time, you have been struggling against a stream that even if you win that battle, you don't get to where you want to be, all for the mark on the chart, so that someone else who is using those struggling standards can say, good job. And we say, why not just let go of those oars and let the stream carry you? And now we want to tell you what we know about the stream. So this stream literally is source, and it carries with it all of the intentions that have culminated within you as you have been this eternal being in the eternal state of evolution. So from that broader non-physical perspective, you set forth an intention, an intention that a part of that which is you would be focused in this time-space reality, in this physical body, and that you would have exposure to experiences which would cause you to expand still further. And you said, the variety will be good for me because out of it will be born from my personal perspective, my personal preference. And you knew from that non-physical perspective that when that preference was born, that the source part of you would just continue to focus upon that new idea. In other words, here you are in your physical body and you're sort of banging around in all this contrast and you see something that you really don't want. But do you know, in the moment of seeing something that you really don't want, there is an acknowledgement within you on many vibrational levels about what you do want. It's so simple. Here's the part that you may not realize because you're not focused so much on the broader non-physical part of you as we understand you to be. You're more involved with the physical part of you that is banging out the contrast. But that non-physical part of you projected itself and had the experience with you and when the preference of what is desired was born, the source part of you went right with that preference and became a vibrational match to it. So the non-physical part of you, you might say, gleans from the experience clarity about what is wanted and gives its undivided attention to what is wanted. So the non-physical part of you becomes the expanded you over and over and over and over and over all day every day. So when you stand in the middle of an experience where you're feeling strong negative emotion, what that means is your life experience has caused you to expand and the larger part of you did expand, but you, for whatever reason, are standing over here beating the drum of what you don't want. Usually, 
very well-meaning, justifying why you want what you want by explaining how wrong this part is. But in your explanation of how wrong this part is, you can even get an attorney if you want to, to help validate how right you are. As you stand and beat this drum of how wrong this is, all that really happens is that you deprive yourself of the expansion that has taken place because of your exposure to this contrasting experience. In other words, the larger part of you grew from it and gained from it and revels in the growth of it, while the Henri justifying, rationalizing you is over here beating the drum of what went wrong. And we say, that's that paddling upstream that we're talking about. Let go of those oars, and you know what would happen? The stream will turn you and carry you to everything that you've been asking for. Some of you have been listening to us for a while, and you've heard us say that when you ask, it is given every single time. Such an important thing to know that we have entitled a book, Ask and It Is Given. Ask and it is given. Ask and it is given. Not maybe it will be given. Not ask and we'll evaluate your worthiness and decide if it should be given. Not ask and later on uh, it will be given provided you fulfill all the appropriate requirements. Ask and it is given. Ask and it is given, which means have an experience which makes a part of you say, I prefer this, and it is given. Now we want to take that title even further. Not only, long title for the next book, not only when you ask, is it given? You writing this down? Not only when you ask, <laughs> is it given? Not only when you ask, is it given, but the larger part of source energy, which is you, immediately becomes that which you have asked for. So, a really good title for a book, long, 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 long title for a book. When you ask, not only is it given, but it becomes in that moment. And now, what are you doing about coming up to speed with that which has been asked by you, which has been given by you? What are you doing about allowing it in? And it all has to do, every single bit of it has to do with whether you let go of those oars and let the stream carry you to what you've asked for, or whether you fight the current in your justification of how right it is that it be given to you. Getting the sense of this? So... This stream is a wonderful thing to acknowledge. It is important to acknowledge that it is a stream of well-being and it is the only stream that flows. It is the stream of well-being and it is the only stream that flows. So Abraham, how do you explain sickness or horrible things happening? And we say, someone's bucking the current of well-being. And you say, oh, come on, it's got to be more than that. There must be some big old evil stream. <laughs> there must be, and it must be powerful because so many people have so many things they don't want that they're being sucked into. And so many churches are speaking every day about how you've got to be vigilant against that stream and that if you don't fight against that stream, it will suck you into its power and take you to places you don't want to go. There is a war against evil on this planet, Abraham, they will say to us. And we say, there's only one stream that flows. We're stubborn about that because we've seen the stream and there's only one stream that flows. So how does it happen that someone could be in such torment or torture? How is it that bombs could be dropping on families and people could be dying of illnesses and people can be jumping off buildings in despair? How is it that so much bad seems to be around if there's only a stream of well-being? Jerry and Esther went white water rafting in Colorado last month with friends. It was a wonderful day. And the stream was very fast-moving water. And as they put their boat into the river, there were six friends and a guide and a guide's helper in the boat. It became really obvious to Jerry and Esther at first splash that there was no way 
they were going to paddle upstream in this river. <laughs> and we say to you in the same way, there is an inevitability of well-being that if you will relax and let it take you, you'll find out that it is an eternal stream of well-being. They also noticed that there were some things in the river that did not seem to be going with the flow. Big boulders, for example, <laughs> rooted to the bottom of the stream. And when the fast moving water approached those boulders that were not moving, oh, it created an amazing event. As the water spewed high and the river roared as it came upon those resistant boulders. And the guide in the boat made it very apparent to Jerry and Esther and their friends that if they would listen to him, that he would help them to maneuver in the stream and that they would therefore avoid having their boat come up against one of those boulders that was not moving, in which case the stream would just have its way with them. It would bash them about the rocks. In fact, he had them recall the release form that they signed <laughs> that pointed out the high probability of not surviving this trip. <laughs> the reason that we talk to you about these boulders is because we're wanting you to understand that the reason you feel negative emotion is only for one reason. You're not going with the flow. It's not because the other flow has hold of you by the hair and is dragging you in opposite direction. It is that you are not allowing yourself to go with it and in your sticking to the bottom of the river, the flow is beating you up pretty good. And you say, this sickness does not feel good. There must be another flow. And we say, no, it's just you not going with the only one that is. Such an important thing to realize. But there's another thing that is equally important for you to realize. And that is, why do you think your river is moving so fast? Think somebody else said, ah, let's put this one in a fast moving river and see if they can catch up. Nothing like that. You created the speed of the river. Every time you lived a little bit of life, you launched another rocket of desire and source went with it. Every time you saw something you didn't want, you launched a rocket of what you did want and source went with it. Every time you appreciated, every time you acknowledged value, every time you lived a moment of life, you contributed to this vibrational escrow and source went with it. In other words, you are the creation of the speed of your flow. And that means whenever you feel even a particle of negative emotion, you're not letting yourself be what the larger part of you has already become. You know those feelings of unfulfillment? That's what they are. You became something that you're now not letting yourself go to and you feel the discord. The river's beating you up. Not because the river is bad, but because you've set it in motion and now you've got no choice if you want to be joyful than to go with the flow that you set in motion. So it turns out that every single thing you feel in every moment of every day is about your relationship in the stream. It's about your relationship to the flow. The better you feel, the more you're going with the flow, the worse you feel, the more you're not. When you are feeling passion, that means your flow is moving fast and you're going with it with no resistance. When you feel strong negative emotion, it means you've got one walloping of a flow going, but for some reason you've got yourself nailed to the floor of the stream and you're not letting yourself go with the flow. But Abraham, I would go with the flow if those bad people would stop doing that thing that they're doing to me that forces me to look at it and feel bad. And we say, we know it feels like that because you felt better before you saw their face. <laughs> you felt better before you played with them at all. But you cannot continue to give them the credit for you're going with the flow or not because you have all of the power about whether you turn that way or that way.